Hey, what's going on you guys? Eric with Ozone TCG. Today we're taking a look at some punk theory on lists. We're going to kind of talk about the reasons for the ratios because these are two very different lists. Um, mostly playing a lot of the same cards, but they function very differently. Um, we're going to talk first about one from Doug. He played uh, over the weekend um, at one of the New Yorker Philadelphia regionals. Um, got ninth place in Fortune was just bubbled um, from tiebreakers. He had the same record as seventh and eighth place. Um, kind of unfortunate the other list is going to be the first place for German Nationals. Let's go ahead and go into it. Before we of course talk about the actual lists, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and use our TCG Player affiliate link in the description below um, for buying any of these cards on TCG Player. Let's get right on into it. So this is Doug's list here. Um, you guys can see it here. He was playing pretty standard ratios. I think the two deer note is starting to become standard. Um, he mentioned from one of the previous YCSs that he did not like the just the one deer note from Hartford. Um, he felt like it was the grind game that was really severely lacking with his deck. Um, just playing the one deer note that the second one did come up quite often. Um, also mentioned that every single Therion was perfect. The Therion ratios were perfect. He wouldn't change anything. Um, only thing he sided out with the with the engine whatsoever going second was Reaper. He would side that out because it's just not good going second because it can only be used during the opponent's turn. Um, everything else I think he kept in. Um, mentioned that Draw and Lock did basically nothing uh, versus this deck, as well as there can be only one. Basically all your monsters are going to be different types, um, save for some choke points, uh, but they just, they just really weren't relevant at all. Um, and that a lot of the other hand traps, like the one Ogre put in a lot of work versus just random interactions, and of course the one token collector, um, only ended up playing the two token collectors between the main and the side deck. But otherwise, I think these are pretty pretty standard ratios, honestly. Um, the Nibiru in the main has been seeing a lot more popularity with this deck specifically. And the one Ogre, um, I don't really think it's taken off quite yet, um, simply because it's okay versus some decks, but not versus everything with the Resurgence of Adventure, though, I think it'll be played a lot more, specifically in this version, or a kind of a Hulk Turbo deck. Um, but really, that's all for the main deck. This is a pretty straightforward, very clean list. I mean, we only see you know, one, two ofs. I like seeing one ofs and three ofs um, in the main. Uh, the only two of, again, is the Deer Note. Um, otherwise, I really like this list. I'm glad uh, Doug had success seeing everything in the main. Um, the extra we're going to go down to right now. Extra, I mean, Rising Carp is standard. Zeus, he mentioned that it was not great. He's probably going to take this out from now on. Um, didn't, I think he made it maybe once the entire tournament. I think it was nine rounds, something like that. Um, Zombie Vampire, pretty standard. Axis Coat, Nightmare Unicorn, Fiber Axe, these are all really standard. He's going to definitely take out the Zeus for um, Relinquish Anima and or um, Selene to make the Axis uh, Fiber Axe into Selene into Axis Coat just to push for game. Um, so pretty standard from there. And then Baron, Chaos Ruler, and Formula Synchron, these cards are insane. You, just, you have to play them in Punk. Um, Hot Red Dragon, Archfiend, he usually would negate the first card that they would activate. And then just immediately go into Fibrax, into Formula Synchron, Synchron to draw one, and then into King Calamity. He is playing this version. Um, said it was really good. Um, not sure if he's going to change it from now on. Uh, same with Psychic Rise, or excuse me, Psychic and Punisher, um, and Scrap Dragon. Scrap Dragon. I don't think it came up too often from him, but it came up often enough to play it more because you only play, you know, Chaos Ruler and the uh, Arch Fiends, uh, Red Dragon Arch Fiends for your. For your dragons, in case you're against there can be only one um, or rivalry, something like that. Um, yeah, and then Riser, he's actually going to probably cut this. Um, apparently, this card did not come up too often. I'm not sure the exact reason why. I guess it was just not easy to make in addition to your combos while being interrupted. That's my assumption. Um, we'll probably get a full report at some point later, or once we discuss it, we'll have him um, explain that. But uh, I guess he's cutting Shooting Riser and the uh, Zeus for Anima. Um, and uh, Selene. So I guess the Enema is for the random <laughs> Jet Synchron in case it's there, I don't know, um, or Effect Veil or something like that. And then of course the Amazing Dragon, again, pretty standard. Um, the interesting thing about his list is the side though. Um, he is siding Gamma and Driver and just the one extra token collector, so it doesn't really need the third one. Um, I think you have a lot of go second cards in this deck anyway, um, and while I would like to see the third Joker Collector, I could see the justification just for playing more diverse 
go second or blow out cards like that. So again, just the one extra token collector here, double Dark Ruler, no more for other combo decks, you probably just side this in. Um, probably take out Leaper, or excuse me, Reaper going second, probably take out maybe something like Called by the Grave going second, um, or the Ogre, depending on the matchup, um, versus something like Sword Soul. Um, probably keep in uh, the, the, the extra token collector, put that in, and take out, uh, I don't know, maybe something else like Reaper and, um, I don't know, I don't know the exact uh, sliding patterns, but um, yeah, really, I think these are pretty good ratios, considering the more diversification of the format, um, we're seeing a lot more different combo decks, and, and Punk Theory I'm taking up quite a bit, Harpies, back row removal, self-explanatory. Lightning Storm, he really likes this card. Um, I think this card is pretty good now. Um, does a lot versus a lot of different decks, and that's really the name of the game right now. Again, diversification, because Luandaries can hurt. This is um, it's a very difficult matchup. Um, but Luandaries thankfully has a little more ceiling overall. Um, just does not do enough going second. Um, and going first, it kind of has to see its couple blowout cards to win. Anti-Spell, he said, was insane. Um... Yeah, this card, I would play this over D-Barrier now. I think this is overall the better card. The only deck that's not better than um, D-Barrier against is Sword Soul, but you have something like Token Collector, Dark Ruler, Nibiru, anything like that versus Sword Soul. Going first, you're probably winning anyway. Um, yeah, really good to see this. And then, of course, the final card is, of course, Red Reboot. Um, you know, if you're playing something like Harpies and Lightning Storm, you're probably also playing Red Reboot. Pretty good. I really like this list. I'm glad Doug did well. Unfortunate to see that he bubbled, um, but probably should have made top eight just by tiebreakers alone. Let's go, go ahead and go to the next list here. So this is the first place German Nationals list. Daniel Hartman. Uh, shout out to Carlancho Store. I really like their Facebook page. I love looking at just the, a bunch of deck lists they have. This is the uh, a way different build um, for the deck. It does play again a lot of the similar cards, but just the way that it is, especially the main deck, is going to be a lot different. <coughs> So here we can see the only, uh, the one deer note, like I said, um, the grind game is kind of lacking with just the one deer note, and honestly I like the pure punk idea, especially post Power of the, Power of the Elements, um, but where the list takes the most different section is the Therion card, so he's playing just the one Reaper, uh, he's playing two Lily and three Regulus. This is different, um, mainly because Regulus you have to see a punk card, excuse me, a Therion card in order to make this live. If you don't see that or if you don't mill them, which is not likely, you're probably going to mill them um, because of our gyro system, this Coliseum, Chaos Ruler, Zombie Vampire, all of that, you're probably going to mill it, but in the cases you don't, it's really hard to summon this card. You'd have to go to a wonky Fibrax play and that is just not great overall. He's also only playing the... Um, the one Veiler, still the Triple Ash, but he's playing instead like Tactics, Prosperity, Droplets, um, just to see some of your cards going second. Um, and, and Droplets kind of acts like a fake Dark Ruler um, going second. I don't know if I like that card necessarily. I don't think it's the greatest. Um, same with Prosperity, it's just like okay. Um, interesting to see he's only playing the two Colosseum, but still playing um, the three R Gyro system, but he's playing the Trap, which revives Aetherion card. Monster specifically, you have to, you can equip uh, from the hand or graveyard, so he's probably using some of, your, some of the Therions as combo pieces and then just reviving them um, after searching the Therion trap with Lily Boria. Um, I think it's an interesting take on the deck, seems pretty cool. Um, not sure how good it is moving forward, but I do like this list overall. I just think that it's um, a very different way to play the deck compared to it, but he is playing some of the almost the exact same extra deck. Again, besides the Scrap Dragon and let's see, Shooting Riser, this guy cut Riser entirely. Um, he is playing the Selene and he's playing Appaloosa instead. Um, I mean, the extra is almost solved. I think you still play Calamity, even though it is kind of. It's not win more, but it is harder to summon playing through a bunch of hand traps. Again, if you resolve it though, you're probably winning. It feels like Flu Wanda Reason that way, in that if your main combo is resolving, chances are your opponent's not breaking that board. Um, yeah, so I, I think we'll see probably a similar extra deck for the NAWCQ this, uh, for this year. Um, we'll probably see this evolve just a little more right before then, and then pretty much we'll see one of these kind of builds take over right before then. Extra, or excuse me, side deck is Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Scarlight. I don't think you need this card. Uh, you really shouldn't be going into time with this deck. 
even versus grind your decks, you just shouldn't be going near time at all. I'd say probably 30 minutes at most is what you're going to want to spend in a match with this deck, especially versus combo mirrors. Um, that's kind of how it is. He's playing Droll. Um, I guess he was expecting a lot of Punk Theory on decks. Maybe he saw a bunch. I'm not sure. I haven't talked to, to Daniel Hartman myself. Um, but theoretically, it's better than it has been in the past uh, couple months. Um, Droll might see some more, some more resurgence, especially with Dragon Link popping up again. Um, as well as the Totem Collector, he is playing the three in the side deck and not playing Shooting Riser, so it is good to see going second versus Sword Soul again. Uh, going first, not sure if I'd play that. Oh, he's also not playing, neither of them played the Adventure version. I think the Adventure version is still worth considering. Maybe that'll be, that these are kind of the three different ways to build the deck. Doug's version, Daniel Hartman's version, and then the Adventure version. Um, we'll see kind of what happens in the next month, right before the NAWCQ. Um, but in the meantime, we have the Nibiru, and then the one Twin Twister, I feel like should have just been Harpies, maybe not. Maybe there's a reason, some chainables. Um, have to kind of look into that a little bit more. Uh, or, if, Daniel, if you're watching this, reach out to us and let us know, or visit uh, Junk's Playground. Again, Carl Ancho credited that. Um, love the design of everything here. And then Red Reboot and Lightning Storm. So I think this kind of deck uh, kind of needs the more blowout cards so Droll can stop some decks, um, some of the other adventure uh, adventure decks. Um, it's okay versus Sword Soul. I will not bring it in versus Sword Soul, but what is good good versus Sword Soul, of course, is Token Collector. That's a blowout card versus that deck. Nibiru can be blowout versus a lot of other decks. Um, and then the back row removal just versus everything else, Striker, Eldritch, Fluonaries, stuff like that. Um, that is the idea, just to play a bunch of power seconds, uh, power go second cards in the side, um, and then just resolve your combo going first. So, in that regard, I really like the way these decks have both been built. Uh, I think, again, they are very different ways of playing the deck, but they are not necessarily incorrect. One is not necessarily correct, one is not necessarily incorrect. They are just really cool, different ways of playing that. I don't know what you got to think about this. Um, we're going to go ahead and test some more of this. Um, I know Doug is going to be playing this for a while. Uh, probably not the same build. He is cutting, again, different cards, and especially the side deck, too. It's going to change depending on the event. Let me know what you guys think about Punk's Theory on overall and some of these builds, and some of the theory. We'll probably have a discussion later on. If you guys want to see that, let us know in the description um, in the comment section below. Eric with those on TCG. Thank you, as always, for watching.